Today is World Heart Awareness Day. Medical advances to repairs, transplants, treatments have come a long way, but more work needs to be done, especially when it comes to caring long term for kids. One in 77 children in the United States had a heart condition as of 2016. That's almost a million kids. Audrey Callahan is joining us. Audrey, your daughter Grace had her first heart treatment at four months old, right? She was diagnosed with her heart condition at 11 days of age. Um, we didn't know anything was wrong at that point. Uh, we went to the to the pediatrician for a standard weight check and her oxygen was low. Um, she was airlifted. Um, she was she was brought by ambulance to Children's Health Care Atlanta at Scottish Rite and then airlifted to uh, Children's Health Care of Atlanta at Eggleston and admitted into the CICU at 11 days of age. So that's when she was diagnosed and we had her first heart transplant evaluation at three months of age. Um, but she actually compensated very well with medications up until the age of six. Wow, what a journey from from really the, the time she arrived. And and what some people may not understand is is the heart transplant's not a cure. She had her first heart transplant, but that wasn't the end of her medical journey. Tell us what happened after that. Right. So she had um, a transplant when she was six years old, almost seven, um, and she is now twelve and a half years post transplant. Um, and uh, you know, overall, doing pretty well but it does come with a lifetime of complications. So they tell us during the transplant evaluation process that it's not a cure. Uh, you're trading one set of problems for another. Um, she has to have blood work done every couple of months to make sure that the level of um, immunosuppressant medication in her body is appropriate. She has to have biopsies um, periodically where they go into her heart and they check for rejection, um, as well as to see how the coronary arteries are doing. Um, she also um, has a couple of stomach diseases, one of which is caused by the anti-rejection medication. She has stage three kidney disease, uh, which is caused by the anti-rejection medication. And she now has the beginnings of a type of coronary artery disease, a type of rejection, um, and it's all just part of this journey. So the average heart in a child lasts about 17 years. We're very blessed that she's 12 and a half years out. We've known, you know, five or six children who've passed away uh, waiting on the second heart. And um, that's a tough, tough reality to live with. Um, but um, she's, she's traveling along this journey despite the many complications that comes along with it. We are very grateful. What would you want people to know on a day that is set aside for awareness and to help people have a deeper understanding of what's facing families like yours? What is it that you want people to be most aware of? Um, I think in the world of transplants, particularly heart transplants, but also other organs, um, there's a misnomer that once somebody gets the heart that everything is fine. And so I think the message uh, that I would like to share is that it is not a cure. Um, they still have a lot of needs and there's a lot of complications and the, the funding for research is very, very important um, so that we can help hearts last a lot longer. And that's where Enduring Hearts is so instrumental with um, raising a lot of funds, providing a lot of research. They have a medical advisory board that funds that research. They work with the American Heart Association and the International Society of Heart and Lung Transplant to do that. So very, very grateful for Enduring Hearts and the work that they are doing to help these kids have a longer life as well as a better quality of life. No doubt we're very lucky in Atlanta to have a nonprofit like Enduring Hearts based here during doing work here in conjunction with Children's Health Care of Atlanta. We're, we're very fortunate as Heart Warrior Moms to have the support and resources that we do here in the city. Yes. Anything else you'd want to add about the continued need for research and more medical advancements? There is a lot more work to do. One other thing that I would just like to throw out there, not necessarily for medical advances, but just for people to consider, um, you know, organ donation is not something that is mandatory here in the United States. And so um, families often don't have those conversations with their loved ones um, before, you know, a situation arises. So I would just encourage 
people to think about it, to consider it, if it's something that they do wish to do, to have that on their license. And also, more importantly, probably to talk to their loved ones about their wishes so that when the time comes, if the time comes, that um, they might be able to give the gift of life at the end of their lives. No doubt, those are such important conversations to have and what a meaningful impact someone and their family can make at a, at a, at a devastating time to give that gift is extraordinary. Before we go, tell me a little bit about Grace, what she loves to do and, and a little bit about her. Um, well, Grace is in college. She is working on a degree and she's working part-time. Um, she has, she loves to hang out with her friends. That's probably what she enjoys the most. Um, she continues to come back to wanting to pursue a career in the medical field. So she's looking at becoming either a certified medical assistant or possibly a nurse. Um, but she continues to want to um, come back and serve in that capacity. Well, that's really special using all of her personal experience to make a difference for other families in the future. We wish her all the luck as she pursues that and, and wish her good health. And I really appreciate you sharing uh, your story and Gracie's story with us, Audrey, thanks so much. Thank you so much.